I warned you it was going to get a little interesting around here if you stayed with me in my 50 uh, iris challenge. So, and here we go with uh, one of the craziest ones so far. Artistic expression sometimes has no knows no boundaries, including financial, so it's possible that I will spend the money on a ready-made cake or pie or brownie or something. I'm gonna go look and see what they've got, and then I'm gonna probably buy a cake mix, and I'm gonna have to borrow an oven because I have an apartment without an oven. more like it but which one and how many one two do I make my own frosting oh the decisions are endless that price a lot and I'm just gonna do the Duncan Hines classic moist and I'm gonna do two of them I just want to show you how far I will go what links I will travel to get a YouTube video for you folks. I have like six or seven or eight or nine or ten uh, camera and iPad holders <coughs> excuse me at the studio. None of them are at home where I am attempting to make a iris out of this cake and so um, at the risk of my iPad experiment failing and my iPad falling on a concrete really hard floor and breaking into millions of pieces, I tied it up to a hook on the wall and slanted it and crossed my fingers and now I'm going to film the cake making process. Got the first cut is the deepest. Oh. All right, do I want the iris this way or this way? I think I want the most iris, so we're going to go. We're just doing it. All right. I don't know. such high hopes for this and they might be dashed at any moment. I have thought about this process over and over and over again. So much so it feels like I've already done it but of course the proof is in the pudding or in the cake mix as it implies here. Okay, we're almost somewhere. I think it would be best to go a little bit bigger than I planned to go. All right. So now my plan is to take out, let's see, I need a plate and I need to not touch my iPad over there so it goes falling. All right, I'm going to save the cake bits because I have no idea if I might need them or not to make the rest of this. Whoa. Okay, I have a lot of leftover cake, and so I'm going to have to do something with some of this or make a second something... But in the meantime, I'm going to cut some little squares. Ooh, so pretty. I'm gonna have to thin this out though, because it's gotta drizzle over the iris. And this would be way too hard to spread on there.
So the first thing I did um, to get ready to turn that cake into an iris today was I um, cut my bangs. And um, that's important. It's part of the um, artist procrastination thinking process that comes before any endeavor. Um, I am waiting for the inspiration to actually do this to make the first cut and so I'm doing other things and, and thinking about doing the thing that I want to do. I, this is a regular part of my practice. I can't help it. All right, I have another little confession to make about how I almost like ruined my friend's oven making this art experiment. I bought that aluminum foil pan to make my sheet cake with, and I got permission to use his oven, and I mixed up the cake mix, and I preheated the oven, and I started to put the the pan of cake mix into the oven when I realized, <gasps> thank you universe, I don't even know how I saw this because it was clear and I don't know, it just happened. But I saw that the plastic cover that's supposed to go over the cake when you get it all done was under the aluminum foil. So had I, or the aluminum foil tray, so had I put the whole thing in the oven, pretty soon his kitchen would have been filled with plastic toxic fumes and his oven would have been ruined and perhaps our friendship. I doubt it. He's a very understanding person, but oh, I already ruined his toaster oven one day. And so I don't really want to move on to bigger things and test his friendship. But fortunately, I saw the plastic and I took it off the foil pan before I put it in the oven. And so the quest for this art iris continues. Here we go.